Hello, welcome back to OT the podcast. We are talking about watches, time, and how to spend it, and cooking today. My name's Philly Schultz. And I'm Andy Green. We have got celebrity chef, food critic, and general all around boss, Alice Zasilavsky. You might know her as Alice in Frames on the pod in a little bit. We've also got a couple of other bits and pieces to chat about. We've also got a bit of an update from Watch Matchmaker. Which one? Do you remember Brian? Brian wanted, uh, he wanted the world for five or six grand, white dial. Yep, yep. So he, he was back in the episode with Diana Chan. That's I right. I think yeah, that yeah. was episode 12. Scroll back if you haven't listened to it. Give it a listen. It's a blast. We won't spoil it. But he ended up buying a watch. What we will spoil it. What did he spoil choose? It. So we suggested, like, because we, we've got a rule in Watch Matchmaker, don't do Rolex. We well, don't do hot Rolex unless it's... Yeah, unless it makes sense. We've done Rolex before. That's so, not... but, so his brief, we both sort of looked at each other when we got the email and we're like, he's going to get an Explorer 2. Yeah, he needs two or $3,000 more, get the Explorer 2 and save us yeah. four hours. We, we spent four hours like, coming up with six watches that were great. There were some great selections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, there was Grand Seiko, you had bloody Oak and Oscar. It was... There yeah, was, it was some, we, went, we went deep. We were on budget. We, we nailed it. You know what he yeah. got? Tell me that he bought that Zenith Defy in uh, ceramic The white, white ceramic one. Yeah, tell me he bought that. No, he bought an Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him. No, but honestly, I think he bought the best watch. I mean, it's the, gra- it's the best choice for him. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Brian. Congratulations on your watch. I'm glad we could help you. <laughs> uh, Alice Asilavsky burst to prominence and fame on season one of MasterChef. So did her glasses. It's those prominent frames that give her her Instagram name, Alison Frames. She's also known for many other things besides good glasses. She's done cookbooks. She's done radio. She's done TV shows. She's done all sorts of other stuff. I don't know. She's pretty cool. She's very cool. I think that's the main takeaway here, but let's, uh, let's, let's have a chat. Let's do it. Today on uh, on the podcast, we've got best-selling author, MasterChef contestant, uh, and all-around legend. Australian food scene legend. Yeah, legend known for her uh, colourful frames. We've got Alice Zavlaski. Did I pronounce that right? No. No. Nah, no. Nah. Correct that's me, right. please. Uh, that, you know, it's just it, that when I was teaching, I would just say, Zas loves to ski. Try it again. Zas loves to ski. Yeah, so say it, say it all in one word. I can't. Felix, have a go. Zathlavsky. Yeah, you're better at the... Uh, Too easy. Yeah. See, look at Felix. Look at Felix. You know, you can pronounce... You can pronounce... Je, je, le culte, but you can't pronounce Zathlavsky. It hurts me, Andy. It hurts All right, me. Alice, we're going to get you on for the show for every time we need to pronounce <laughs> JLC because that was fantastic. <laughs> you know your watches. Well... Just call me Miss Z then. Miss, Miss Z. <laughs> if you want to abbreviate. I like it. <laughs> we'll just call you Alice. Alice. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome to. Cool. We're mate. Ten minutes into the podcast, we've got over the introductions. <laughs> yeah. What are we here for? What are we talking about? We're chatting about veg. We're going to chat about watches. And we're going to chat about uh, what you've been up to, Alice. Why don't we start with, you know, watches? That's probably the obvious place to start. And then we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see where we end up. <laughs> This is this, Andy's been you're, Alice. You're flustered, Andy. Know, you've, you've called you've, him out early on. You've roasted and me. He's not liking it. No, no, no. Well, Alice, we met sort of years and years ago. Now, I, I'm pretty sure I spotted a Panerai on your wrist, and and we sort of connected yeah. and and got chatting. But refresh me. What what Panerai is that that you like to to, to rock? Because it was it was quite big. It is. It's, it's a chunky. It's a chan, chunky. Uh, Panerai, uh, it's the lefty. That's it. That's right. And it's actually, yeah, it's um, it's one that I share with my husband, and it's a funny old story, which I'm sure is on your list of questions to ask. It is. So should I get ahead of myself, no, or should I wait for you to ask the question? Just spill. Tell us. Okay, because okay. uh, it's it is a really easy place to segue, but I've just made it super awkward. <laughs> uh, but um, I um, uh, we ended up. So this was actually. Years ago when we bought this watch, um, I had just finished shooting um, a season of a a show, um, Crunch Time, that I was doing. And um, when you do things like that, those big kind of creative projects, you get paid big chunks of money. Um, And we were in Sydney Mm -hmm. and I'd just gotten my TV money and we were walking around um, sort of the circular key area. Yep. And we wandered past... um, watches of switzerland yep you know that really the, the fancy shop there yep, and the um and we'd been talking yeah near the, exactly near, near the sofitel and um is it the four seasons four seasons um and we wandered in because we've been talking about watches for so long 
And I kind of wanted Nick to get a watch, mm-hmm. but he wanted me to get a watch. So I was looking at just like a straight up um, Submariner for me. Oh, love that. Um, and then I was looking at, you know, different different watches. And then actually I ended up trying on one of those um, rose gold. Oh, <laughs> right? classy. Yeah, that was, that was because the, the champagne came out. Yep. You know, they, they know how to turn it on. That's how they get you. Good. That's how they get you. Um, you know, Nick had his glass of whiskey and we're feeling, feeling bougie, feeling fine. And I ended up, um, Nick was just about to say, we'll think about it. And I ended up saying, yep, we'll take that one and I'll just pop some cash down on a watch, um, for me, for me. And then left the building, um, didn't think anything of it. It was coming up to Christmas and, um, I realized that I, I cook. Mm -hmm. For a living, like that's kind of I cook, I write, all the things that I do. Um, aside from when I wield a microphone, and that's when I can kind of rock a giant watch. All of these other things, you really don't want to have something weighing you down, literally and metaphorically, in terms of like having something on on your wrist like that. Just kind of impedes your thought process a little bit, I think, because you're less careful. You're more careful. You're kind of less spontaneous because you're worried about the watch. And so I thought, you know what? I know what watch Nick really loved. Mm-hmm. So I went back in. I was still filming another season um, of the show, and Nick had gone back to Melbourne. And um, I went back into watches, and I said to them, "Listen, um, I don't want to tell Nick because he was all like, get it for you, get it for you.' But I want to swap." my down payment and I want to get his watch and can you send it to Melbourne um, and I want to surprise him with it. So amazing. <laughs> the time came for it was like a week before Christmas or, you know, a week before everything shut down for Christmas and um, I said, oh, we're going back into Watches of Switzerland. It is on Collins Street in Melbourne to pick up um, the Panerai and, you know, he's He's coming in with me. He's excited for me. And then the box opens <laughs> and it's the lefty and you should have seen his face. It was the best. It was the best thing. And um, and it was so worth it. And I wear it every now and then. You know, I wear it if I'm up on stage with chefs mm-hmm. because chefs are watch people. Yes, so they are. Um, I, I love I love that sort of subtle kind of, you know, detail because it's kind of like I get you on that level. We don't even need to say anything, but we're there. Bit of a nod. Um, <laughs> It's a nod, but also it's a it's a giant watch face, so I can see how long we've been talking for, which is helpful um, when you're kind of doing that live kind of thing. And um, I just think it really makes a statement because I can wear something really simple, and then I've got this sick, you know, suede. I like the I like the suede kind of um, fawn coloured band. Um, although we've got the the rubber band on it at the moment, the black rubber, but um, it's just cool. It's just a cool watch. It's a very and cool that's watch. The story it's of the lefty. That's an amazing story. That's very cool. I'm keen to hear <laughs> how often uh, the sharing takes takes place. Yeah, that and was, yeah. Well, that's a really cool <laughs> concept. But so this is the 40, 47 millimeters, isn't it? It's big. It's massive. It's massive. Yeah, it's a big watch. It, it's, yeah, it's a good huge. It takes up my entire wrist. But it's good that it's a lefty <laughs> because that, the, the the biggest thing for me is like the ray. If you've got that big crown guard sticking out, yes, that sort of really digs yep. in when you move your hand around. But if it's on the other side, much less of an issue. Smart move. Totally. Yeah. No, you're totally right. Um, and because Nick's a lefty, um, and he's got big wrists, so he um, at the time he was an osteo. Um, he's now a a retired osteo, mm-hmm. so his wrists are slightly. Um, his forearms have slightly shrunk, but you know he's he's got big forearms, so the watch really kind of sits on his wrist really comfortably. Whereas on mine, it's just a giant chunk of a thing. Nice. But I I just love it. I just think if you're going to wear a watch, <laughs> does, wear, a, you know. wear wear a big watch. Wear a watch that says wear it's a, a watch. grandfather clock. Yeah, sure. That's right. Does, does Nick wear it on his <laughs> left hand or his right hand? Ooh. Uh, he wears it. So he wears it on his right. Yeah. So I'm a lefty, yep. and I wear it on my left. It's the power. Ah, the, pa- yeah, the power I was of thinking about that pressure. crown. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, what's that about? Peer pressure. When I started pressure. wearing watches, I'm like, well, everyone wears their watch on their left hand. I wear it on my left hand. Yeah, yeah right. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how often, how does the share, sharing take place? What's the process? Is Nick just wearing it by default and then you pinch it whenever you want? Exactly. And um, I have to say now that we've got, we've got a 15 month old mm-hmm. um, and neither of us are watching, oh, like wearing that watch So that's watch why you've got the rubber often. strap on it. Vomit. Yes, absolutely, yeah, definitely. Waterproof as well. Um, uh, 
waterproof exactly for when you have to you know anything <laughs> um but yeah it's kind of when you've got that delicate especially in the newborn stage and um when they're little and you're holding them all the time the last thing you want again is something chunky so yeah that that watch has been sitting in comfortably in its in its little you know safe safe place in in the house um but I think we're both yeah very much looking forward to <laughs> <laughs> to wearing it when the time comes but in terms of you know who gets it nick definitely gets priority wear mm. but i have to say because it's so big um if he's wearing a suit it's not really a suit watch so i think we have been talking about what our next kind of suit okay. watch okay purchase right. might be Ooh, what where are you so, where, yeah. where's your head at on the on the next purchase probably oh look probably a jlc but uh, but okay. it'll it really will depend you know i'm very open so maybe something rarer i don't know um, it's kind of. Oh, sorry. Please, yeah. If you've got if you've got an idea, a quick Felix, suggestion. Love to this do is it. what initially comes yeah. to my mind: a JLC Reverso mm-hmm. with two sides. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, you, Nick can have one dial, and you can have the other dial. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's Boom. exactly where our heads are at. That's great. Yeah, you're all over it. Yeah. Yeah, you know us. And again, you get, you, <laughs> you get one of the large Reversos as well. It would still. It, yes. It, and it would still wear fine. You'd be used to that bigger size. Cool. All about right. it. I don't know if you've seen um, the Reverso. Um, video about like the the story of and even the story of, of JLC as a company they've got like a cinematic probably about a 15 minute cinematic that you can find on YouTube and it just gives you goosebumps it's such an it's such a great story but the way that it's been crafted um, the animation it's just oh, it's the, the, even the music it's a bit like back in the day okay because I know the people that are, li- that are listening to this will appreciate this also. Back in the day when we were gaming mm-hmm. um, and you'd see the cinematic of like a new, say a World of Warcraft or something coming out and, um, and they'd really turn it into a tra- like a trailer for a movie. It's that same kind of goosebump. You're like, I want to be in on this. When JLC meets World of Warcraft. <laughs> JLC meets WoW. Exactly. <laughs> Limited yeah. edition. Summoning is complete. I love it. It's <laughs> ridiculous. I totally know what you mean. The marketing works. It yeah. really does. It gets you every time. Yeah. And the, uh, Definitely. The, it's the, all about the story. The Reverso has a cool story behind it, obviously, you know, the, well, we don't even know if it's a real story anymore, but the, the history with the polo. The polo and, players. Yeah, and yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I'm no, wearing a T-shirt yeah, yeah. that's got a Slim Aaron's print of polo by the sea on it. So it's, what a coincidence. Apt. Mm. Is it though? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to mention it, the Reverso. I was just like, oh, that's a cool connection. Wow. I mean, I guess it's a connection. I don't know if it's a cool one though. Well, Slim Aaron's is an amazing photographer, so sh- <laughs> Anyway, okay, other than the uh, reverse, have you kind of been thinking about anything else? You mentioned a Submariner earlier on. Yeah, I'm, I'm always sort of um, taking a squeeze at what people are wearing. Would I, oh, you know what I really, I think at some point I'd really like um, a cool, I've got uh, a, I've got a fob watch. <laughs> Okay. That's um. Do they call them fob watches when they're on a chain, or is it the, not? Like, as in when it, not not in the pocket, but like on a, like on a like a pendant watch. Is that a thing? Now I'm gonna get really nerdy and and do some horrifile stuff. Mm. A fob is, do I it. believe, something that attaches to the chain. Uh huh. Oh. I think Ooh. like so a, like clips onto you. Okay. No, it's like you used to have things on the chain, and I think that's a fob. Anyway, I'm probably getting it wrong. Oh. But a, a pocket watch. Pocket watch. I think that's yeah. No, no. Fob watch is the um. It's the watch with the clip. It's what the doctors and nurses wear. So it's it's ah. it's like a um. It looks like a keychain with a watch on the end, yeah. and it clips on. Yeah, yeah, and a pocket watch is on a chain. Okay, so I have a pocket watch from my grandmother, like mm-hmm. a rose gold, old school Soviet pocket watch. Ooh, cool. Um, but very cool. Um, but I would never pop that in my pocket if I was sort of you know. Filming or working or cooking, could, could but I think I something. want like a utility pocket watch. That's what. I want. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't want anything that I'm wearing. Yeah, you know, Panerai yeah, did so some again. ridiculous pocket watch that's pretty utilitarian. It was yeah, like, Panerai oh. do pocket watches. They, yeah. they still do every so often. <laughs> okay, I'll have to do some research. <laughs> <laughs> Call up your friends at Watches of Switzerland. I'm sure they'll remember and uh, they'll bust out the champagne again. Oh, they'll they'll remember. I think we definitely left a. <laughs> We, we we left an impression. <laughs> okay, very cool. Well, it's cool to hear that you're you're still into the watches, and obviously, you know, we we thought about getting in on the show after you uh, you reached out up and and saw our coverage on Hodinky, which was pretty cool. And are you are you into the watch media? Are you reading reviews? Are you how deep does the kind of interest in watches go for you? Um, not as deep. I've actually got uh, my husband's brother Chris is very into the watches and the watch media Mm -hmm. so he kind of keeps us abreast of of new things going on 
um, we kind of have to prioritize our time at the moment. So, um, <laughs> we've got well, you've been like, busy and you've, like you've got, uh, <laughs> you're, you're a busy woman. Uh, yeah. and, and when you're not, you know, spending the, the big bags on, on watches, you, you're writing books. You're getting big bags of potatoes. And that, that, uh, <laughs> that, that royalty check coming in and we, you're doing pre-orders on, uh, on a book at the moment. So why don't you tell us about your latest yeah. project? My new book, In Praise of Veg, uh, comes out in November, but it is available for pre-order now, so November 2020. I'm assuming that this podcast is evergreen and people will be listening to it in, you know, years to come. 2025. Think, yeah, years yeah, to come. Constantly. Um, but it is, um, the, I think the book itself is evergreen as well, um, pun intended, um, because... Love it. <laughs> um, thank you. That was literally cricket. That was and terrible. That, that, was, that was, I can tell you're a parent. I was woeful. Yeah, you can. I've been practicing my my dad jokes a lot, um, but actually, I'm yeah, I'm a dad joker from way back. But um, it, the book is a reference book about vegetables, but not as you know it. So it's kind of it's close to five hundred pages. Whoa. It's all the things that you ever wanted to know, or that I could ever fit into those five hundred pages about vegetables it's organized by color so oh. even if you don't know what it is you know what color it is so you can go to that section and, and check oh. there you know based on what, on what it looks like it's also got quotes or tips from over 50 of the world's sort of most interesting chefs to me some of my favorite chefs from both australia and around the world and it's um it's got over 150 recipes and they're the sort of recipes that you can cook midweek but then there are also recipes in there for people who are um, entertaining for the first time. It's got shortcuts in there if you're in a hurry. It's also got a vegetable matrix which I feel like you would get into which right and so the vegetable matrix basically asks you how much time you have um what you feel like do you feel like light and bright or do you feel like more of a flavor bomb and then it gives you either um you know straight up how long it's going to take and what you should be doing with that vegetable or it gives you a suggestion of a recipe if it's more of a flavor bomb take your time you know takes a little bit longer than a little box to explain so So it's yeah it's sick (laughs) So if I'm in the situation of, oh, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? We've got some half broccoli we should use up. We've got a tin of this and some mm, carrots. Can I use your matrix Mm -hmm. and it will tell me what I should make? Definitely. So you can go into it and have a look at the the broccoli um, section and it'll tell you that you can take that broccoli, you can preheat a tray in the oven um, and and meanwhile oil up the the broccoli either as florets or you can even keep it as a steak. Chuck the broccoli onto the hot tray back into a hot oven and within 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the size, you've got yourself um, a burnished, softened, delicious you know meaty kind of either side or you can zhuzh it up let's say with um you know, nuts and dressing and, and that can be the main event very cool cheese very cool sounds good <laughs> yeah. i mean I'm, I'm yeah. big into the veggies as as the listeners know but i, I see on the cover you've got a uh, a bit of a quote from nigella and it says <laughs> alice yeah. loves to ski is a force of nature that's a pretty cool quote who uh, who else is kind of chiming in on the book who else is you mentioned some chefs who's in there um, yeah, that is a super cool quote. And I, when I received that email back from my publisher to say that, you know, that Nigella has come back with this cover quote for you, I just, I actually had to take a moment and take a big deep breath. Cause I just, um, I, I've had the chance to spend some time with her in the past sort of, um, five odd years. I've hosted her on stage. The, the last time that we were on stage together was at Hamer Hall in Victoria, Amazing. in Melbourne, you know, to two and a half thousand people. And, um, that was just, I was, I feel super honoured to have her grace my cover. Um, but then inside I've got chefs like um, Dan Barber, um, Jose Andres, um, I've got um, Monica Galetti, Sat Baines, um, Sky Gingell, all UK chefs, and I've got Ben Shuri, I've got um, Matt Stone. Um, I'm thinking about the watchy people. Um <laughs> Oh, George Columbaris with his Hulk, he's he's in there. Yeah, yeah. There we go, Darren Robertson. Um, there's just essentially a Juan Roca. Um, so, you know, some of the top sort of Spanish chefs are in there and they're doing some really interesting stuff with veg. Um, uh, who do you know? Tetsui is in there, Matt Moran. Oh, actually, yeah. look All right, I'm, settle I'm, down, I'm settle down, leave some for the rest section. of us. 
It's <laughs> jam packed. Yeah, so, okay, so it's look, it's yeah, a great book. Rick Stein. Yeah. yeah, it's jam packed. It is jam packed, and um and the the reason that I wanted the chef kind of quotes in there is because chefs and food people love vegetables because mm. there's so much that you can do with them but I don't think that that's necessarily been conveyed to home cooks in just a really clear concise kind of way that makes them feel inspired and makes them rethink the way that they look at vegetables and realize that they don't have to be seen through a lens of like this is good for me or oh, I have to eat it it's more like if you do this with vegetables they will be the most delicious thing on your plate and you'll want to eat more of them yeah, totally. I mean, I've had deep fried broccoli and it's phenomenal. I mean, deep fry anything, it's oh, yeah. probably a good idea. Yeah. It's healthy it's, too, right? Yeah. It's broccoli, yeah. It's yeah. green and looks like a tray. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Look, my entire book is just deep fry it. That's, <laughs> that's every page. That's what it says. And, and smother it in <laughs> tomato sauce for the kids. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, obviously you're on our podcast, but I've got to ask you, what is a nomcast? <laughs> Nomcast. I love that you're asking me about this because hopefully there are some parents tuning in. Um, Nomcast is a podcast that we created for families. It's designed for the commute. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the car with your kids and you're driving to school, from school, you know, sport, whatever you're doing, you can pop on a a Nomcast. It's between seven to 12 minutes and it just kind of gets you deep diving into the world of food and it might be about sustainability or it might be about technology or fermentation through a veggie lens um, because what we've found in our research, so for the last, um, since since we've met Andy, Mm -hmm. when we met, I was food editor at The Weekly and I was restaurant critic and, and that was kind of my bag um for the last close to um it'll be five years next year there you go um so well let's say for the last four years i've been working on a project um, called phenomenon with an Mm -hmm. m and it's funded by government and industry and we help to make vegetables cool (laughs) for kids by changing the way that they see them and not just veg um fruit seeds nuts fresh food so you're rebranding veggies we're rebranding fresh food. That's right. And we're doing it through schools. So the program has digital tools for teachers like um, lesson plans and videos. But the Nomcast itself is designed for the commute because what we've found in our research is that it's one thing to give the, t- the teachers the tools, but it's another to find opportunities for parents to find, you know, those little moments, those little light bulb moments that then they can start to talk about at the dinner table. So it's kind of like giving you little prompts to say, hey, how cool was that story about the the mushroom hat um, or the, the mushroom that is so flammable that it can maintain and retain the heat? And that's actually how people were transferring kind of like a lantern. They were transferring fire from one place to another with a mushroom. That's ridiculous. I want to, I want <laughs> that's to listen ridiculous. to that. Yeah. Yes. We'll link Good. it up. We'll link Please it up. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nomcast, five stars. <laughs> Sorry, Alice. I, I was distracted for the last few minutes because you said you were um, making vegetables cool again and I suddenly imagined. Are you familiar with that episode of Portlandia? With... <laughs> no. I'm going to have to uh, find it. Uh, anyway, it's uh, Steve Buscemi and broccoli. That's, that's great. Huh? I'm definitely oh. linking that up. That's great. Anyway. That, that, was just, that, was a, that was me in my own little head there for a second. I was really hoping you were across it. Make veggies cool again. All right, what is your favourite veggie then? Oh, that's hard. Um, I would say that it depends on the time of year. So if you'd asked me that in summer, I would say tomatoes. There's nothing better than um, a juicy, picked, just picked tomato. You know, it tastes like sunshine. Um, at the moment, I'm loving the brassicas. So as you say, broccoli, um, cauliflower. I love things like Romanesco broccoli. That's got those. Um, in fact, that's the one that kind of looks like it's out of it's it's from outer space. And that Romanesco broccoli appears in a scene in Star Wars. What? Wow. They use it as actual. Yeah, they use it as space food because it looks so out of this world. Um, and it is such a beautiful vegetable to serve up whole. Um, kind of like, you know, a whole roasted collie, but you do it with that and you've got those beautiful sort of um, fra- kind of fraxel shaped, um, what does it look like? What would I describe it as? Kind of like um, ziggurats. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I know the ones you Heaps mean. of green yeah. ziggurats. Yeah, yeah, you know the one. You know the one. Fractal. Yeah, they look like fractals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fractal. That's, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and what would I say? Are there, it really depends. In, in spring, I look forward to asparagus every year. Um, peas can be so yummy it just i i think it's like choosing a favorite child well, mine is potato 
It's funny, actually. We can segue this. We can. He, are you ready for another perfect segue? Yeah. You know who else loves yes. asparagus? The Swiss. Who? The Swiss love the Swiss. asparagus. They love white <laughs> asparagus. They go nuts for oh, it. Oh, yes. It's like a, oh. it's a, it's a big deal over there. And in uh, so the big trade fair in um, in Basel, when it, when it was a thing, you'd go mm-hmm. there and sometimes the brands would take you out to dinner and you'd have these big sticks of white asparagus, asparagus that I think yes. they would – the restaurant would charge because it was Basel week, mm. like 30 francs yep. a stick. It was Al- ridiculous. Albino asparagus. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very rare. Well, it is. It's very rare because they do have to grow it. Um, it, it can't access the sun because um, that, that's kind of how you keep it white. So in Australia, in Victoria, which is responsible for much of the asparagus production in the country, mm-hmm. um, the first Victorian grower to discover how to grow white asparagus did so by kicking over a bucket accidentally um, over one of his little plots, coming back the next day, lifting it up and seeing that the asparagus that sprouted up was white. So, How do you know? So how? how do you even know that? It's amazing. What do you mean how do I know that? That's literally my mind it's, palace is full of this stuff. That's yeah, why that's I don't have job. time to. These are the facts. You know, the, you're, you're spitting yeah. facts and truths around <laughs> the veggies. We need I to am. get this book. So who is this book for then? It's Is it just for everyone? It, it is for everyone. Yeah. So it's for um, it's for the avid home cook. It's for someone who's just starting out. I'd really love for millennials to pick it up. You know, young people, people who are just moving out of home. Amazing. It's also for your mum because I think that um, the women of a certain age um, who have been cooking for a squillion years and have their kind of go to recipe books, they're kind of looking, I think, for something new and, and something different. That's a twist on what they're already doing. So this book really speaks to them in a way as well. And I, I had my mother-in-law in mind for, for some of the recipes in particular, because I know I know her and she's my viewer as well for News Breakfast. You know, I'm the culinary correspondent for ABC News Breakfast. And I get emails from um, not just women, actually, I should say. So it's people uh, around the age of, say, 50 upwards, 50 to 70 saying, I tried your apple cake and, you know, this is the first time I've baked and I really enjoyed it. Or, you know, I'd like to tell you about the trip that I took to this. is You'll love this. I'd like to tell you about the trip I took to Bulgaria in the 60s. Amazing. This is amazing. Yes. And I, and I have to say, there's another um, person that comes to mind. I was at the, I was at a play at the MTC and during intermission, this, um, woman in her sort of, um, she was a a slight uh, lady, um, very well put together, very well dressed with fiery red hair. And she came up to me and she said, I know you. (laughs) Hello. She said, I have a picture of you in my phone. (laughs) I thought this is so strange. She said, I know she showed me and she said, I showed this photograph to my hairdresser because I wanted my (laughs) hair. Cut like yours, and then she said, "You know, uh, this is my name." And she said, "On the weekend, I'll be 80. <laughs> she looked great for eighty. And then she said, "You're it's a haircut. Mad she looks great because of the haircut." <laughs> yeah, she's a ledge. She is said, she wearing the big frame mad, glasses as well? Bifocals. Yeah, of course, of course. Those glasses. I think that's probably what resonates for you know really cool women of a certain age of those specs because yeah I'm like I'm living a semi-retired life in my 30s and I'm living the dream and then this is my favorite part she said you're mad as a cut snake aren't you (laughs) straight (laughs) as straight up and I just thought you are an amazing person and I will never forget this so yeah did you dedicate the book to her I should have. I, well, actually, I've dedicated the book to the nut, so it could be anyone that's a little bit nuts. <laughs> but in in this case, it is our, yep. our, our daughter Hazel. But um, yeah, so she. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. A little bit. I would have nutty. gone with the nut, the lady at the MTC. I'd stick with that <laughs> over over the year first Remem- born. Yeah. Remember that in the press tour. That's, that's our will. gift to you. <laughs> and let security know to keep an eye out. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> well, being semi-retired, you've obviously uh, lazing about home. You've got a few recommendations. You mentioned, you know, let's talk about how you're spending time at the moment. Maybe there's some some Netflix, some podcasts, some some things you're doing to kill the time that you want to, you know, give a bit of a plug. Yeah, well, um, one thing that I'm loving at the moment is our yoga studio in Melbourne. So we live on the Mornington Peninsula now, and one thing that I super miss about Melbourne is going to Humming Puppy, which is a yoga studio in South Yarra. Um, And the reason why I love that studio in particular is because they play like a hum, like a vibration 
um, a resonant kind of hum throughout the whole session. So it's no kind of like um, there's no music. It's just this hum. And what it does is it really grounds you and it just feels amazing once you do, do a sesh. And I was missing that for so long. I was doing that all the way up to the day before I gave birth. So, you know, every day. Okay. Um, and then, you know, since since hazy, it's been a little bit harder, but especially now that we're not in Melbourne. But now because of ISO, they've gone online. So okay, cool. if you are a person, even if you have never tried yoga, Humming Puppy online is a really great service. Um, and they're not, you know, it's super cheap. Um, to, to access Very and cool. it's just a really cool thing. Anyway, that that was a plug. Um, what else do I want to give a plug to? Yeah, plug away. Um, oh, coffee. Can I tell you what coffee we're ordering? Yeah, what are, you, what are you drinking? I'm a big coffee, coffee guy. Ooh, coffee, coffee. We are. So when we caught up, we, we talked coffee a little bit. Yeah, My favourite coffee is um, from Bayano the Rebel in mm-hmm. um, South Yarra as well. But um, if uh, – or they, it's also the coffee at Monk, Bodhidharma yep. and – um, Admiral Cheng Ho, it's called Disciple yes. Roasters, and they're um, shipping. So Ooh. if you are a discerning individual who enjoys the finer things, then you are clearly listening to the right podcast. Yeah. And you should definitely look up Disciple Roasters if you want to try their beans because they are delicious. Yeah, um, I and we've right. got a mocha master here and we're doing filter coffees every day, um, most days, and that kind of kept me going when I was writing the book, that's for sure. (laughs) We're two peas in a pod. I love the Mocha Master. And, yeah, Disciple, I would say, is probably the best coffee in probably Australia. I think they're the best roaster in the country. Boom, shots fired. Shots fired. Yeah. Well, I've been liking something. And I'm going to go a bit rogue because normally we don't. We break out of these segments. But I feel like this is particularly relevant (laughs) to you, Alice. Uh, We've got a little segment. I'm sure you've listened to every episode, but we call it – it's – uh, originally branded things we have liked, uh, and it's just where we talk about things we've liked. Now these uh, these are Gucci glasses chains uh, from the their 2020 summer collection, but they're made from resin and they're like full size resin, like chain. The, the way I would describe it is, you know, the chain you buy at a hardware shop to like chain something oh. shut. Mm. Like Imagine a bike. that. Yeah. Imagine sort of your grandma's glasses chain, super sized awesome. to that. That's what yeah, it is. yeah with a nice that. resin and then like the little Gucci logo on the um, the little rubber loop that, that puts your glasses on. They're about 350 360 US dollars. They're pretty okay. ridiculous, but they're also pretty cool. And we'll link up some useful, practical images. Too. But I just, I like the idea of maybe you getting some of these Gucci glasses chains for your frames, Alice in frame. Alice well, in I actually, my optometrist, um, actually, I should plug them to um, wink optometrist in ormond road they cool, cool. have wild frames yeah. uh, and they actually have started doing chains so they they um hooked me up with like a green chain love it but i just feel like with my giant like the frames are already grandma enough mm. i kind of need to mitigate that um <laughs> however why not <laughs> i'll give it a go i'll well, try, I'll try I, it out i will say maybe not I mean, maybe if you, your your child is young enough at the moment, do yeah. it. Get, yeah. In another six to twelve months, you might want to hold back on the chains around. That's, that's totally that's not going to work out well. Yeah, yeah, she's super grabby already. Yeah. You are, yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Well, Alice, thank you so much for joining uh, joining the show today. Everyone will uh, be sure to pre-order your book. We'll link up your book. Uh, you've got an Instagram for the book at In Praise of Veg V E G, and of course at Alice in Frames on Instagram with a blue tick there. So that's pretty cool as well. Big deal. Um, Who even are you? Verified. Uh, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been a treat to have you on. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me, and I uh, hope you go home and cook up that brock. That broccoli, it's definitely being eaten. A hot Get pan in the, in the oven. oven. Yeah, Florence, a bit of oil, bit of nut. Rock Love it, it done. Thank you so much. <laughs> Rock and roll. Thank you. Ciao. Well, that was cool to chat to Alice. Felix, what have you been liking? <laughs> what an abrupt segue. Straight there. Wow. Uh, I've been liking lots of things. And, yes, it was lovely to chat to Alice. What a trooper. Um, I've been liking something a bit rando. Mm-hmm. Classic Felix. I have been liking email. What do you mean email? Uh, well... It's one of those things that, you know, it's been in our lives uh, and it's sort of love-hate relationship with email, I think. But there's a product out there that's sort of new called hey.com. Have you ever heard of this? How's it spelled? H-E-Y dot C-O-M. Oh, yes, I have heard of hey.com. So hey, 
Uh, for those of you listening that may not have heard of it, it is a product by the guys who do base camps. It's like Project uh, Management Jason Freed. Jason Freed. Uh, you've got his book and you lent it to me and I read it last year. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, it doesn't have to be busy at work. It doesn't like have that. to be crazy at work. So to, And he's got rework as well. I think I lent you rework. Yeah. No, it was crazy at work. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. So he's, he's quite an interesting guy. So like he's a very Silicon Valley tech dude, but mm-hmm. he's also quite... He has a really strong, or the company as a whole has a really, like they push an agenda of what work should be. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it doesn't have to be this. You should only be working four days. This is a waste of time. Don't do it. And they've taken that approach to email, which I find really fascinating. Okay. So email's been the same. Like the, the last big sort of exciting thing in email was Gmail, and that was like 15 years ago. Yeah, if not longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they've t- had a bit of a, uh, a look at what the product is and they've said, like, you don't – email comes into three different categories, like stuff you want to read, stuff you don't want, and receipts. And so they've s- taken this approach to, like, working out a new email management system, really, and I find it fascinating. Have you signed up? No. Are you going to sign up? It's, it costs um, – so I think it's, like, 99 bucks US a year. Okay. Um, and I pay for my email at the moment. I've got G Suite. Yeah, but yeah. the issue is, I'm, I'm really curious about it. And I'm almost, I'm, I might do a free trial. Maybe we move watch matchmaking to hey.com. Maybe. Be a little trial for the, for the biz. But what I, want, what I want them to do is so that I can have it. Um, this is Felix's OTIT segment. <laughs> Diversifying. Where, where, they, where I can have it like hosted so I can have my work address, but using that. Um, email platform, which you yeah, yeah. I'm sure but, you can. But I think it's fascinating, and I think I'm all for um, you know the stuff that you take for life in granted. Mm. Like you, you know, email's always email. It's always a pain in the ass, and you just get spam all over the shop. Change it up. Good way to save some time. Yeah. And speaking of saving time, oh, segue green again. Well, hold on. Jason Fred is actually a massive watch guy, and he's got some. Oh, was he killer vintage pieces? I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he used to be on Instagram, but I think he's. He's, he's done with it because he doesn't need that it's, distraction it's a, in his it's life. It's a waste of, as per his dogmatic beliefs on technology. Yeah, yeah, but he's got some lovely sort Let's of vintage. Lovely. I think he was one of the guys, like, you know, like Apple paid, bought watches from Hodinkee, that sort of thing, like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 oh. watches, that sort of thing. Um, but he's got vintage Rolex, a lot of independent brands from memory. Cool guy, cool guy to follow. Um, yeah, okay. We'll link him up if he's still there. But back to the segue. Alice mentioned something that I want to have a bit of a deeper dive into. Was it her love of early 90s TV show sliders that she mentioned before the recording that I'm definitely including in Vegetable this? puns, why don't we use them more? No, she mentioned that her and her husband both wear uh, the same watch and they share it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is cool. Love that idea. Yeah. But it's a very big watch. Like mm. it's a 47 or 48 millimetre Panerai lefty, which at the best of times, like that's big for anyone. Like there's no one that I'd wears that, that watch. I'd say that's big for me. Yeah, there's no one that wears that watch and says – this is a small watch. Mm. And what I found interesting from her perspective was she didn't care. Like she went in eyes wide open and said, it's a watch, it's a statement. When I wear it, I want it to be big. I like it because it's big. And, you know, her husband, she kind of said, has bigger wrists and can pull off a larger watch if you really wanted to. But I love that perspective and that idea of like, this is a big watch, I'm okay with that and I'm buying it because I like it regardless. Mm. And it reminds me of something that Christoph granger Hur said about the IWC collectors that they have and these customers that just collect the watches. They don't actually wear them. Yeah, sure. Now, if I was to buy an IWC big pile, it would be too big for me. But is it okay for me to buy a big watch and just have it because I like it for what it is? The question is, uh, and I think, is it too, say that BP, Mm. is it too big for you if you wore it every day? Or is is it okay if you wear it? On a certain time. Like Alice was saying, she wears her watch mm. on stage when she's doing stuff, so, like, it doesn't matter. But maybe if it was a... But then she said, like, when, in her daily life, when she's chefing and stuff... Yeah, it's in the way. She doesn't wear a watch. So it's sort of like... I think it's context is important. And also, like, if I was wearing it, I would be thinking, this watch looks big on me. But would other people on the street be like, this guy, look at him, he's got, this watch is way too big for him? Or would they yes. just be like, would you think people would really like, like even think, think that? Or is I, just I must admit that I, I know people that have big pilots and I'm like, oh, that's a big watch. Yeah. Like, Do you know anyone that actually has a big pilot that it doesn't look big on, it just Arnie. looks normal? Yeah, exactly, right? You have Arnie's to be- the, Arnie, The Rock, they're the only guys that can, you know, make that look. Michael Jordan, there's a man that can wear a, exactly. wear a big watch. But at the same time, is it okay to 
well, it's anything's okay. Like you make whatever rules you want. Mm. Is there any issue with it? It's just a weird kind of thing to go. I, th- I think it comes down to like your your confidence or your self belief, mm. and it goes the other way as well. Yes, like, true. Um, you know. Whenever, so I've gone back to like smaller watches, like 36s, where I've got a 36 millimeter watch that I really enjoy wearing. But, and I don't think that that looks too small. Like I, you see on like Facebook and on forums mm. and stuff, like, oh, does this look too small? Like I think there's a real, the, the needle has moved in the last, certainly in the last 10 or 20 years to the bigger or back to the smaller now. Yep. But if you look in the macro scale, in the 40s and 50s, Rolex were making men's watches like 32, 33, 34 millimetres. A jumbo watch back then was 38 millimetres. Yeah, right. And like we're wearing the Black Bay 58s mm. at the moment, which are 39 millimetres. And I have people asking or commenting and saying that it's too small for them. No, it's not. It's 100% not. There's no way on earth that that watch is too small for you. Like that is the optimal size. Have they been conditioned by big pilots and maxi cases to think that... It's like a mental thing. Yeah. And you, we, you know, we, we talk about it a bit, but there's people out there that kind of say, I only wear... Watches oh, over forty two millimeter. Thirty nine to forty two millimeters. Yeah, or thirty six millimeter day dates are too small. It's like, no, that's the size that the watch yeah, 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 came right. out in and it probably should, you know, belong on. I, uh, so there's that. So there's uh, I think what you're comfortable with, because if you want to wear a forty eight millimeter Panerai and you've got a, a wrist as, you know, uh, looks like a twig, mm. that's fine. You do you. But I also think, what was I trying to say here? I had something and it's gone. You do you. Well, okay. The other thing that Alice, the notion that Alice just completely shattered was the idea of men and women's watches. Mm. Is that even a thing? Only. According to the brands, like brands obviously have like. No, it's, it's interesting. Okay. Um, I think it's, there are some watches that they're quite careful, like and having, you know, read my share of press releases and like talk to brands about this a bit. They're really careful about saying this is a men's or a women's watch mm. because it's so contextual. Like in Australia, we might say a watch with, with diamonds on it is a woman's watch. We might. If we were in different parts of Asia or different parts of the, the world, to a different cultural context, diamonds are great for everyone. Well, if they're in a flower motif on the dial. Yeah. Apparently that's a woman's watch. Yeah. I think, yeah, so I think, no, basically a watch is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. Gender has nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's what I think as well. And I love the idea of just sort of... There's a watch that's come out today that's a really great example of it. Hit me. Hublot, Millennium Pink. Okay, I did see this. I, I, uh, I saw Tom, uh, Nick Wooster was wearing a, yeah. uh, it on Instagram. Tell me about it. What do you know about it? I haven't read too much about it. No, neither have I. I've just seen it on Instagram. Um, but it's basically they've made a Millennial Pink watch, which is sort of like a dusky pink. Um, but they're sort of saying it's, it's a unisex model. That's and cool. It's, and it's a pink watch, right? But they're ex- explicitly sort of pushing it as a... And I think that works. Like, it is a hot watch. I'm, I'm Googling it right now just to pull up. Yeah, so 42 millimetres. It's like a dusty pink, but... Yeah. Oh, that's... Okay, 20... But, the, but they're sort of being quite mm-hmm. forward about pitching it not as a feminine product. But it's not pinky pink at all. Yeah, it's sort of like yeah. almost a bronzy... It's millennium pink, which is, you know, millennial, millennial pink. Like, yeah, no, I think men's and women's watches are ridiculous. Anodized um, aluminum. Okay so, okay, so that's how they've got that finish that finish that sort of sucks light in and makes it kind of look a bit darker and yeah cool so it's a big bang nice cool i love that <laughs> you finish reading the press release what a, what while a well we're time recording. release <laughs> no 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 look we'll link it this up dynamic that's, dynamic radio here we are loosely structured today no that's cool it's a it's just interesting to kind of hear these stories and hey, stop should we do like a, a callback radio thing tell us in the comments below what do you think should, would you wear a quote unquote woman's watch what people need to do is email our new hey.com address <laughs> don't, we, um, don't. <laughs> we don't have yet but they need to email us and tell us if they share watches with their partners because I know that like that idea has been kicking around for a long time of like I'll buy it have you have you sw- sw- uh, sworn shared watches with partners in the past no no, no. me either I might, you know my, my partner has a zero interest but yeah, and I think that I kind of would treat a watch differently as well. Like I would be much more careful of like a 40-year-old vintage Tudor or Rolex than they might have been. Hmm. But Maybe I've, the right watch. Yeah, it depends what the watch is and the partner, I guess. Hmm. I'd share a watch with you, Felix. Yes. Would you? Podcasting partners. Yeah, we'll have Don't to do um, that Batman. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> can't get any more scratch, can it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Well, what's the, that devaluation? Email now? us if you share a watch with your, or comment on this post, but email us if you share a watch with your partner yeah. and let us know how it's going. Yeah, and I, look, and I, th- I, don't, I don't want to know really what you think about, you know, men's and women's watches because I yeah. know I'm right because, you know, they're watches. 
and Wear if, what you like. You know, if you want watch making uh, watch matchmaking advice beyond what we offered Alice loosely on the uh, with our chat with her, email ot the podcast at gmail.com. You know who I'm, I'm just I know you're trying to wrap up, but I've had one other thing. You know who does watches really, really well in terms of the gender thing? Who? Nomos. Yes. They make the same watch in a range of sizes. That's it. Like so so there's no design like it's often you'll go oh I want that design it's only made in this size that's true yeah, yeah. whereas they'll just they'll general well, they used to do it more like with their core line like the tangentes and stuff you can get it in a hole from 33 to 38 millimeters whatever size does not matter does not ot the podcast at gmail.com ot.podcast on instagram thank you very much thank you to major tom media for yeah, he's a good guy putting up with us allegedly every week uh we'll catch you guys next time Bing.